y'all. Uh, I'm excited because today we are looking at this, uh, which apparently is me taking a little cheeky flyer off the front of the group in this descent. Uh, yeah, there was a group already off the front. Boardman's trying to bridge up to him, so I had to do the same, or at least try to do the same. But yeah, we are looking at this, which is the Joe Martin Stage Race Criterium here in downtown Fayetteville, Arkansas. For those that are not aware, the Joe Martin Stage Race is the second of two stage races that we have here in the US. Yeah, like I said, it takes place in Fayetteville, Arkansas every, every May. Uh, it's four stages and this, the crit, is the fourth of those four stages. And here I looked back and saw that Tyler Stites was on my wheel. So I sat up and John sent it across, which is great. Because like I said, we are not in that little move. And it looked like they were quite content to let it go. So we just got things going again. Um, but yeah, so that's the road national champion that just rolled through there. The crit course, which we're coming up to the finish line right now. So we'll just do a lap. But... Yeah, this crit course is widely considered to be one of the the toughest crits in America. You know, they when we're sat on the starting line and everybody's walk, looking at us, they love to say that it's the hardest crit in America. I mean, I would say it's definitely on par with something like Athens or, or Snake Alley, like just because it's punctuated by that climb up to the finish and then you make that left-hander and even that is like a 2% drag continuing up the hill and then finally you get up here and there's this little little bit of chicanery happening um in this moment i am literally bleeding out of my eyeballs <laughs> from that like small attack followed by everybody following the the counter attack so yeah you go through that little chicanery make that last left hand turn go down this downhill get back up to speed it's usually pretty deceiving where it looks like you should just be able to roll onto the wheels but you actually have to accelerate pretty hard out of that turn to stick on the group luckily for me on this particular lap they caught the brake and so things slowed up for a split second before you see up there somebody else goes flying off the front um, make another left hand turn over some bricks and a weird bump and this is the main downhill straight um this is how we get to the bottom of the course it's uh, i think four blocks long and then you can see we're like bumping across these brick crosswalks which yeah super bumpy the first few laps which i posted the first five laps of the race going down this hill people's water bottles were just were just flying everywhere so super fast downhill coming to this this le another left hand turn really honestly has a pretty like decent speed limit to it so even though we come into it at 40 miles an hour it's not a turn that you can just rip at 40 but coming to this straightaway another fast left-hander pretty wide open that one you can take super fast even though it is off cam off camber kind of to the right when you're turning left which isn't ideal but then you come into this the penultimate straight uh yeah it's sort of like a false flat uh two percent uphill so uh, yeah, it honestly, on laps where we're really ripping it, can be very, very difficult. I mean, you see I'm doing 500, 600 watts just sitting on the wheel here. But get to the top of that, make this last right-hander, and boom, there it is, the last climb. Yeah, from the turn up to the finish line, it's, you know, again, depending on the lap, anywhere from like 25 to 30 seconds. And with that false flat before it can just be brutal. Um, yeah, I was pretty much out of the saddle most laps, especially these closing laps, doing 700 plus watts. Uh, and that's lap. Here we go. Coming into to eight to go. Sitting in front of us, we got Sam Boardman. Yeah, the, the, the situation um, here with eight laps to go is actually pretty exciting, to be honest, <laughs> for those... Like, I, I imagine if the people sitting on the side of the road knew what was happening, they would have been very excited. But the situation is that this is basically Medellin's race to lose and Denver's race to win. So Denver's guy, Riley Sheehan, who is just on an absurd level this year, um, stage three, which is a uphill time trial, he broke the course record going sub nine minutes which 
it's a 5k time trial is just insane honestly um he went sub nine minutes broke the course record put himself in second gc overall because who also are here medellin and miguel angel lopez aka superman lopez aka former world tour rider smashed the course record even more <laughs> and rode like 842 or something which honestly i don't even think anybody thought that was possible like he did something like 7.8 watts per kilo for the whole thing yeah just absolutely nuts but lopez is in yellow riley sheehan i think was six to eight seconds behind him coming into the crit but the crit had two sprint points throughout it that uh both had three seconds up for grabs and uh yeah denver did a great job of leading riley out for those sprints and he nabbed them both so in this moment with seven and a half laps to go riley sheehan i think is even or just like a second or two behind lopez for the gc but there are 10 bonus seconds available at the finish line for the winner so effectively if riley wins the crit he wins the overall and denver is riding their ass off to make that happen um yeah who else we got going on here i mean of course it being a stage race we've got we've got legion here uh just kind of nipped by sam you see we got alec here he is uh sort of a native boy of fayetteville he i think has spent some time here uh training and he has won this crit before i think on multiple occasions he's won this crit and yeah the announcers loved every time we would come through the finish line mentioning the fact anytime he was near the front that he was a somewhat local boy uh yeah so that's riley right there in the red um looking for the race win today uh even though this guy says first internet bank don't be fooled you can look at the bike see that it's a blazers bike that is tanner ward i mean yeah great crit racer super strong guy um definitely a course that suits him really well this guy on the right with the epm that is team medellin i'm gonna be honest they kept saying team medellin, medellin epm and the joke of the day was like just one time want him to slip up and say medellin epo uh, but it never happened here we go yeah like i said that corner deceiving thousand watts out of the corner just to uh to hold the wheel um even though it's a five percent downhill so brutal and yeah who else we got so we have the legion guys up there we've got the denver guys we've got medellin and then the miami knights are also here I'm trying to see brian gomez is in the bunch somewhere clev martinez in the bunch somewhere two of the objectively best crit racers in the country right now especially on a course like this they're both yeah there you go there's there's gomi both just like ridiculously strong dudes have won crits like this i mean gomez i think has won this crit and has won hundreds of crits like this in his lifetime probably up there in the yellow you can see there's lopez looking a bit uncomfortable in the group coming down the hill um yeah man fast corner fast corner coming into that guy not as fast as we'll get to it when when it's a little more strung out but yeah, the name of the game at this point for me was really to just like try and be as close to the front as I could without using too much energy. I've done a pretty good job of like recovering from, yeah, that <laughs> quote unquote big effort I did to try and get off the front. The thing is about this race is that we went fast as shit. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we averaged 27 and a half miles an hour in a crit where we did almost 3,000 feet of climbing uh so like we're coming around we're t we're turning eight times a lap we're coming around and doing this climb every like two minutes basically and somehow we still managed to do 27 and a half miles an hour probably because every time up this climb we're doing you know 500 600 700 watts just to get to the top um yeah dude nuts so we average yeah we average 27 and a half miles an hour which means if you want to go off the front of this race you have to be doing more than that you have to be doing probably 30 miles an hour and i don't know about you 
but I have a hard time basically doing an ITT on my road bike at 30 miles an hour through eight turns up and down climbs. Like, yeah, it's nuts. And again, it's because uh, Denver had Riley in a good position. All he had to do effectively was like finish in the top five and beat Lopez and he wins the race. He wins the whole thing. So Denver is on the front, keeping everything just absolutely locked down. Um, yeah, making sure everything stayed together. Like, yeah, look it, we're doing 37 miles an hour on this straight. <laughs> there you go. Here's another guy coming, zooming forward. Uh, he may be in the uh, the Space City kit there, the Space City Devo kit. But again, take a look at that bike. That's a Blazers bike. That's Johnny Brown. That's former pro national champion Johnny Brown. Just letting me know that he knows I'm there and he's not going to trot my wheel. Thank you very much, sir. Appreciate that. It's kind of funny. The sign would always blink that we need to slow down because we were speeding through the streets of downtown Fayetteville. Uh, yeah, so like I said, the whole goal for me, I'm actually feeling really good, really confident on this course. Um, the legs are feeling good. I'm finding that I'm not like struggling to, to stay with the group uh, up the climb every lap. Like I, I feel like I have you know, the energy to be here, to, to be in this race and be like competing with these guys, which is really cool because these are, you know, objectively the fastest dudes in the country. Um, yeah. So at this point, like trying to conserve as much as I can for the last laps without, you know, letting, letting myself, uh, float too far back in, in the bunch. Yeah. People are starting to throw off the bottles. Hopefully you, you've, drank pretty much all of your bottle at this point yeah there you go tanner ditches his bottle too um because yeah i mean this was this is a long race this was over an hour hour 22 and yeah <laughs> the teammate non-teammates having a little discussion about what they're gonna do this was an hour 22 super intense like you're doing these huge efforts multiple times a lap literally every lap for 30 laps here we are over 800 watts consistently um so you need carbs like you're not making it through this this race without having a bottle of carbs Oof, getting really pinched into the barriers there luckily they've got the nice barriers um so i wasn't too concerned as a uh, tyler williams comes up my inside here and <clears throat> yeah will harden going backwards like i said he <clears throat> he tried to jump off the front for a lap or two and again like it's such a big effort to try and stay off the front that once you get caught it's hard to just get back in especially if you're getting caught like right at the bottom or the top of that climb um but yeah i mean so you, you definitely need your carbs for this race you can't come into it just like oh, a bottle of water will be fine i personally used a bottle of scratch lab super fuel which is 100 grams of carbs per bottle um yeah i took that in over the course of this this race i think i finished it with five to go and honestly ended up like i said feeling feeling pretty great all race so here i'm just trying to make sure i'm not going to get nipped by anybody it kind of spread out so there wasn't really anywhere to go I'm just floating into the back of the group trying to minimize how much work i have to do to get back up to speed with the group yeah and i think one thing you'll you'll find and one challenge of this course is that you end up just kind of getting stuck in one spot or around one group as we go by the white jersey there, the best young rider. Because it was so fast, again, like, it was hard to pass more than just like a couple people at a time, right? And then because the roads are so wide, <laughs> as Stitzy comes through, because the roads are so wide, it's also hard to keep people from coming by you. like. I'm not necessarily trying to get around this Legion guy here right now, but I can't also can't like protect both my inside and outside. So you would like get by a couple people, but then a couple of straights later, they would just do the same thing back to you. And you know, this race, there was never like a point where this race lulled. Like we were just on the gas the entire time. Like this is a straight where it would commonly last year in 2022, would commonly come back together so you could get around like a big group of guys all at once with a little bit of energy but that just wasn't the case today so i'm trying to get around guys coming around the outside but 
you know, this NC Lotto Max guy could sense that I was there and just, you know, his bars were in front of mine. So he pushed me to the outside and didn't give me anywhere to go. And then even here, I'm still looking for chances to move up, but I get blocked from going to the right. And uh, Denver's doing a great job of riding the inside lines and just keeping the left side completely locked down. So I end up actually like losing a few positions and it's just like, yeah, you have to really focus on your positioning, especially now that we're in, I missed it, either four or five to go. And, you know, everybody's thinking the same thing. Everyone's thinking it's time to move up. It's time to move up. I've got to be up there at the front if I want a shot at a result. Um, yeah, luckily these few laps coming into the chicanery here, we got Project Echelon guys that are also starting to make their way to the front. That's, I think that's Colby Lang. He's riding just incredible this year. He's been riding super, super strong. Especially in the crits. If you watch the Sunny King crit, he was all over the front of that race. And is, yeah, obviously looking for, for a good result here. Uh, but yeah, the chicane's usually a good spot to uh, catch your breath. Not not too many moves are being made through there, so you don't have to worry about it too much. It's easy to, to protect your wheel. Um, yeah, and again... Um, one or two guys maybe we'll get through, but boom, Edder Frere using the inside, shooting up the inside, using his momentum. That was pretty great on a street that was a little bit slower. Now we're cruising through here. This was an interesting one. Um, again, like these uh, these downhills, pretty bumpy. Is, is it this lap? And one thing that was happening a lot this race is dudes having their chains popped off because they're in the 11. And you can see this Medellin guy, look at his chain, fully off of his chain ring. I see this and I'm like, dude, I need to not be around this guy in this turn. Unfortunately, Bickmore's on my outside, he's on my inside, comes through, and then the Rio guy also goes to pedal his bike, just chain not on the chain ring. Uh, yeah, so I get two free positions there, but lose one to Cade, who ripped up the inside. Dude, also, Cade having an incredible crit year. Um, let's see, he was he was up there at Redlands, he won the Gila crit, won Sunny King for that matter in a big three-up sprint, and yeah, I mean, it's just also riding super strong. You know he's looking for a result. He's, I mean, look at him there, rock solid, absolutely rock solid. But yeah, chains dropping. I don't know, man, people talk a lot of trash about SRAM, but... I had my SRAM chain ring, SRAM front derailleur. Didn't drop my chain once this race. Knock on wood. Yeah, so what? Here we go. We're rolling through. We got we got the, the Blazers, not Blazers guys looking strong. EPM, Medellin on the front, just <laughs> grinding at like 50 RPM for whatever reason. Uh, yeah, just, just bike race things. Just doing 800 watts up this climb to try and move up. Uh, Stites in the green jersey, the sprints jersey. I think he was up there getting getting points so he could hold on to that at the intermediate intermediate points. I keep forgetting to look at how many we have to go, but it's getting down to it. Can't be more than four to go at this point. Um, yeah, so there's a pit on the left, which was nice having your mechanic there yelling at you to move up every lap, but keeping you focused. <clears throat> He's also a good place to get, get any um, info on time splits for if there, there what did happen to be a group up at the front, which again, because we're so fast, because Denver was on the front, really <laughs> did did not happen much. Yeah, and you could see through that last turn that Denver's got all their guys up there. Um, what was it, like six of them up there. And then Legion is gathering at the back of of their group, um, which was cool to see, you know. Denver Denver's in the driver's seat on this and Legion was was fine to let them kind of do a lot of the work here going into these closing laps like they were not up there trying to trying to take over the race just yet um and yeah i'm feeling like i said i'm feeling real good i'm feeling good about where i'm at like you know a lot of those denver guys are going to end up blowing up and pulling off um yeah legion once they get their lead out going like a lot of those guys are going to be pulling off so i'm feeling good about my position you know you can always be one wheel higher but Man, yeah, even even though <clears throat> a good strategy on this downhill was to basically just like move up the left side and then late <laughs> late break everybody through this turn and shoot up the inside because there is like a, a speed limit. Uh Denver's like I said, doing a great job of keeping that keeping that left side locked down. So yeah, I'm you know, leaving a little bit of a gap here. One thing I like to do was not pedal as much as I could on that straightaway. 
leave a gap to the guy in front and then just slot back in. But yeah, it's, it's, it's rip it time. Um, so <clears throat> this, like I said, this, this, this straight is kind of a false flat. I mean, 2%, I would say isn't even false flat necessarily. So when it's rip it time, you're, you're doing a lot of Watts just to hold the wheel. Again, look for, look at another opportunity to try and move up the outside, but everybody's doing that. Get squeezed into the fence. It's fine. Didn't lose any positions doing that. Didn't gain any positions doing that. But again, sort of blocked out from being able to move <clears throat> up the right like that Medellin guy did. So I take this look at the left. You know, you're constantly just looking for where are gaps opening up, where are people moving, and I can take my shot. But yep, there you go. There's one Denver guy. His job's done. He's moving up, or he's moving back, I should say, but kind of blocked my lane to really jump up too many wheels. At least we've got the inside here. Inside can go wide. Tyler Williams, you know. A, a former winner of the stage race and also of this crit so you know if you're on his wheel in these closing laps uh you're in a good spot but like i said i'm feeling super good so i want to i want to move up i want to be try and get up to the back of of the lead out trains um but this lotto max guy also was feeling the same you could tell he was riding super strong uh really aggressive but not in like uh an unsafe way I would say uh, super aggressive but really safe we've got clever kind of going backwards clever was riding incredibly strong this race also uh, in the last six laps he probably spent three of them just like solo off the front for a while or one or two with one or two guys uh, we got number one Johnny Clark last year's winner here in front of us and then boop Alex Hone is going to drop his chain also another <laughs> another Shimano guy dropping chains so yeah we get a spot there but maybe lose a couple um, yeah like I said Johnny Clark last year's winner of the stage race so we're in the right place right like we're around the right guys Denver right here uh, I think he was starting to go backwards but was able to uh, to slot in on the downhill catch some recovery coming into this thing 40 miles an hour rip the turn we must be in two to go because yeah this is super strung out um really hard really fast really hard like hard again to find find the wheels to move up but we're honestly not that far back what are we wheel 15 maybe and you know like a couple oh here we go yellow jersey lopez leader look at his back wheel completely flat coming in penultimate lap penultimate straightaway coming into one to go and the dude has a flat tire which means like luckily for him you know he's in the three to go so he's going to get same time of the group but there are time bonuses available at the finish so that means that lopez's uh <clears throat> stage uh stage race win hopes are pretty much over uh yeah so there you go gavin hoover going backwards ethan crane swinging a little bit but riding strong <laughs> clever back from the dead he got his recovery we got edder shooting up my outside um everybody knows lap, lap or bell lap here we go one lap to go we gotta move up i move up try and follow edder but for whatever reason johnny clark just leaves the inside open and people just shoot through it i'm like dude oh it's last lap what are you doing like we lost four wheels right there just because he's leaving five freaking colby comes through too um just because he's like soft pedaling and leaving the door open. So I'm in scramble mode now. I come up Edder's inside, won't see him again, following these guys, trying to take a look at moving up the outside. But I mean, we're just going so fast through those, those chicanes that there's really not much you can do. You know, I put in a little bit of effort. I think Clever, like Clever knows that I'm, a, that I'm strong and I'm big. I give off a good, a good draft. So I think he was okay of let me slot in front of him. Here, I know I need to move up. I decide just like three seconds too late to try and sprint up these guys. So by the time, by the time I get up there, they're swinging to the outside, pinching me off. I've got nowhere to go. Luckily, I didn't have to use too much brakes, so I maintain decent momentum. But clever gets me on the inside, lose a wheel, not make up any wheels, and then it, yeah, we're like I said, scramble moment. I do feel really good. Like I know I have the juice to get to the finish. It's just a matter of trying to get these guys. Um, trying to not waste too much energy because I know that like someone's just going to slam the door and sure enough like <laughs> I think that's is that Edder? Yeah he sees Clever trying to come up the outside and just closes him we got Riley right there that's nuts dude Riley's right there 
take the inside. Eric or um, Ethan comes up my outside. And yeah, it's full gas. In this moment, again, I still feel good. I'm just telling myself, okay, <clears throat> we just need to go all out for a minute. Everything you have for a minute to the finish line. Rip through this turn and it's, it's go time. Like there's no, no time to try and conserve energy anymore. All that's done. You just gotta go. You can see my shadow. I'm fully out of the saddle right now, but <laughs> so is everybody else. And again, like I'm not a bad sprinter, but I'm a pretty big guy. I'm one of the biggest guys in this group and it's an uphill sprint. So I'm just doing everything I can. We, we snagged one more spot there um, on Clever's wheel, obviously a good wheel to be on. God, I kind of take a bad line there, not the best. But dude, we're going 26 miles an hour, 27 miles an hour up this hill, and I'm just just getting ditched by the by the proper sprinters. 900 watts. I did a thousand watts for like 20 seconds, going backwards. Cade sprints by me, but we get clever. We get Edder. We cross the line. We're eighth place. Uh, super stoked. But yeah, dude, Riley Sheehan, dude is an absolute animal. Takes the win. Takes the win um, of the crit, and with that time bonus and. Lopez getting that flat takes the win of the stage race. To be honest, couldn't be happier for him. Dude is an animal uh, riding on such a crazy level right now. Uh, yeah, love to see him sort of take the win over over the, the world tower guy coming coming into the US. But yeah, here's here's some stats for you on that guy on that race. <clears throat> At the end of the day, like I said, the race was an hour twenty-two long. We averaged 27 and a half miles an hour, covered 37 and a half miles, and did 2,880 feet of climbing in a crit. What? Come on. Um, yeah, dude, pretty crazy. Uh, to accomplish that and be with that late group, I had to average 380 watts and did a normalized power of 404 watts. <laughs> Uh, which is pretty nuts. Um, so for those wondering, that's the kind of power it takes to a, to a hang in a UCI crit like this. But yeah, that was, that was it. Those were the last 10 laps of the Joe Martin stage race crit. It's pretty good time. I'll tell you what, but, uh, yeah, let me know what you think. Hope you enjoyed. Um, headed out to Washington, D.C. for Armed Forces next weekend. So if people enjoyed this sort of thing, maybe I'll slap the GoPro on the bike for those crits. Definitely two crits that don't um, suit me quite as much as this Joe Martin one did. But again, yeah, thanks for watching. Let me know what you think. And uh, we'll see you next time. Good luck out there.